are there any other risk factors that you are aware of for developing leptomeningeal disease? Yeah, there are a few different ones and, and they're very similar to that of, of brain metastases. So um, in terms of subtypes, very frequently we might see this in the HER2 positive population or the triple negative population, basically populations that we know that have a predisposition for, for the central nervous system. I, th I think I've even heard, so correct me if I'm wrong, does lobular breast cancer have a propensity to potentially develop into leptomeningeal metastasis? Yeah, absolutely. That, that can as well. I mean, truly it's any, any uh, breast cancer could. So even outside of the two examples that I provided, any breast cancer subtype could, uh, but, but the top two of that list would be HER2 positive and triple negative. Understood. Um, and speaking of that, how common is leptomeningeal disease in breast cancer patients? I don't know if we have a statistic on that. <laughs> no, we do. I mean, I would say for, for all comers, if you're looking at breast cancer as a whole, it, it's a very small minority, right? We're talking like 5%-ish, you know, but it's again, those risk factors that you refer to. So for example, in the HER2 positive population, depending on what statistic you're looking at, 30 to 50% of patients with HER2 positive disease have CNS meds. Um, and of that, you know, a fraction, a, a significant fraction of that is leptomeningeal disease. So, you know, the subtypes really do matter. And, um, but all comers, it's actually a, a, a much smaller risk. But I think our brain metastasis is more common than leptomeningeal disease. Yes. We're going to see more brain Correct. mets than we will lepto. Okay. Correct. That's so even in that, okay. even in that figure of 30 to 50% of HER2 positive uh, disease going on to develop CNS or central nervous system metastases, it's still just probably around, you know, depending on what you read, uh, 15 to 25% of that, then that goes on to develop lepto. So, so it's still, it's still going to be a, a minority population, even within the CNS population. Okay. And, um, and I think I've also heard and read that, that we are now seeing metastatic breast cancer patients living longer with their disease. So might that incidence actually increase as we might start to see yeah. more CNS, brain metastasis, lepto? Okay. It's a very insightful question. It's a, and, and it's actually totally accurate. And, and we've already started to see that um, over the past, you know, handful of years plus. And, and beyond that, so the answer to your question is yes. And then beyond that, we're seeing a lot more patients who are dealing with disease only in their CNS compartment, be it brain mets or lepto, because of exactly those same reasons. So we're so, I think we're doing great as a field, as a breast cancer field moving forward with, with great new therapies and advancing the field. Um, it's not necessarily an exact parallel advancement in the brain, although there are CNS advancements occurring as well. But for that reason, we see a lot more patients who with the given therapies are doing great systemically or, or neck down, if you will. And we're really primarily dealing with, with the CNS or central nervous system disease. Yes. I think this is really why we started this whole project and website is because we want to see the advancements that we see in breast cancer in the central nervous system as well. 